So I'm glad that we have come to order. But I'd like to see everybody that's sitting on this side. I'd like for you to all move to that side. <laughs> there you go. I just don't want you to get too comfortable because you become, you want to own that seat right there. You, every Sunday you come in, you want to sit right there. So, so since you don't want to do it today, next Sunday I want everyone over here to sit over there. All right. You're going to sit over there. <laughs> so let's stand to get a call to worship. It said, it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High, to show forth the loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. My voice shall I hear in the morning. O Lord, in the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee, and I will look up. O God, thou art my God, early will I see thee, and I flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. See thy power and thy glory, so I see thee in thy sanctuary. Amen. Good morning, church. I just want to give a, I don't know if we really give shout outs up here, but I want to give a shout out to my brother Arnold. Um, when I first started coming to Friendship, I used to always hear him say, you guys should come to Sunday school. So I'm going to, in honor of brother Arnold, you guys should come to Sunday school. We had a great class and a minute class this morning. You just learned so much and it's been a blessing to my life and it's changed my life. Uh, just coming to Friendship and coming to Sunday school, surrendering to the Lord. I love it. So, so I encourage all of you, come to Sunday school. It's, we have a lot of room for you. So, <laughs> we, Especially in the men's class. We have a lot of room in the men's class. So I'm going to read this morning from uh, Matthew 24. I mean, sorry, Matthew 16, verse 24 through 28. One of my favorite scriptures. Verse 24, then Jesus told his disciples, if anyone come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what shall a man give in return for his soul? For the Son of Man is going to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and he will repay each person according to what he has done. Truly, I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming into his kingdom. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers and the hearers of his word. So we all know, you know, how powerful prayer is, right? I mean, I think some, you know, there's sometimes there's so many things that happens in your life, you know, and, and in the midst of, or maybe even before those things happen, we set prayer aside, right? Because, you know, I often talk to you about that a lot of times when things happen to me, I want to fix it. And, you know, and it's just something that I probably was born with that I have to fix it myself. And when I found out that I couldn't do all that, you know, I started understanding what prayer was all about. You know, because he's the only one that can fix it. All right? So... As we go to the throne of grace today, right, I probably, I know somebody in here don't need prayer, right? They don't need it, right? But there is someone that do. 
So as we sit here, right, and if you're one of those lucky ones or blessed that you don't need prayer today, then we're going to ask you that you pray for somebody else, right? First person that comes to your mind is all good, right? So let's go to the throne of grace. Precious Heavenly Father, as we come to you right now, Lord, Lord, we just thank you for who you are, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the mercy and the grace that you continue to give us each and every day, Heavenly Father. So Heavenly Father, right now, right now, Heavenly Father, I ask that you put a name in a person's mind, Heavenly Father, that they know that they need prayer. Give that to somebody in here today, Heavenly Father. We lift that person up to you right now, Heavenly Father. Because, Heavenly Father, we know that every time we pray to you, Heavenly Father, there is no mistake. When you answer, Heavenly Father, it is what it's supposed to be. So, Heavenly Father, we just thank you for who you are once again, Heavenly Father. We thank you for allowing the doors to be open in friendship one more day, Heavenly Father. So, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the pastor who's going to bring us the word today. We thank you, Heavenly Father, on the lifestyle that you have shown him, Heavenly Father. The lifestyle that he continues to show us, Heavenly Father, that all things are possible if you put him first. We thank you for the scriptures that he teaches us each and every time that he speaks to us, Heavenly Father. All those scriptures, Heavenly Father, has just has, has enlightened us, has encouraged us. Yes. Heavenly Father, we just love the relationship that we have with you. And to all those that are sick among us, Heavenly Father, we bless and ask that you bless them, Heavenly Father. The blessings that you show us, Heavenly Father, is how you encourage them to carry on in your name. So we just ask once again, Heavenly Father, that you just continue to work with us and we'll continue to give you all the honor and praise to all these things we ask in your Son, Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus, Jesus is real. Hey. Sister Joyce, if you want to come on up here and give God some praise, you can too. You can join the clock, sisters. Come on up here. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Oh. He's real to me. Jesus is real. I know the Lord is real to me. Yes, he is. Ah, sometimes when I'm feeling low, nowhere to go, Jesus comes along. Feeling down.
Everybody, praise the Lord. Jesus is real. Amen. Amen. Real, real. Jesus is real to me. Amen. Praise the Lord. Good to be with you here with you this morning. 
This is uh, what the world calls Super Bowl Sunday. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So I can tell you who's going to win. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's already won. Well, look, I can't top that one, so we let, that one, we let it go. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus. Praise the Lord. So will you pray with me uh, briefly? Heavenly Father, we thank you for a wonderful day that you've given us. And as we come to look at your holy, precious word, we ask, Father, you would give the congregation ears to hear, hearts to receive your word. And Father, will you help me make it very plain that we can understand it, we grasp it, and live in accordance with what you teach us in your holy word. Thank you, Father. We love you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going back. Uh, our theme for this year is the year of prayer. And uh, we're going back to Matthew 6 and verse 8. Matthew 6 and, and verse 8. And again, the first part of the instructions of our Lord is don't pray to be seen by other people. But, but to pray seriously, secretly, go to your heavenly Father. And he rewards us openly. So in Matthew uh, 6 and 8, uh, he makes another statement here. He says, therefore, do not be like them. The them are people who don't know Jesus. He calls them uh, in Gentiles or heathen because they think they will be heard by many words. And so many words and especially vain repetitions don't mean a thing. Amen. So he says, therefore, do not be like them, for your father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. Amen. And that's where I, the, I wanted to focus again on that part. We, we did it last week, but uh, we need to go back and, and uh, go over this one more time. Amen. That our heavenly father, he knows the things we have need of before we ask him. Amen. That's something we need to pray about that we get, uh, as far as understanding. Yes. Get, get to the understanding. Our Heavenly Father knows. He knows the things that we have need of before we ask him. Praise the Lord. So that the indication is that, again, as we're praying about need, that uh, God knows we have need of, and so he will provide. God will provide. We've got to seek God first. But that's the one thing we've got to learn. Because many people, Jesus is saying, a lot of folks pray, uh, which demonstrates in their prayer that they don't have a relationship with God. So as believers, and before we pray about anything, I know that God knows what I have need of. And so that doesn't mean he's always going to say yes, but he knows what I have need of. Right. He knows my needs better than I know my needs. There are, th there are things and times I think is, something is needful, but it's not. And so he knows. Now this is so important uh, in the scheme of things that if you go to Matthew 6 and 32, you'll see it again. Matthew 6 and, and 32. If we can put that, uh, that verse up. Matthew 6, 32. I have the King James Version. And uh, what it says in the King James Version. Matthew 6, 33, uh, 32. Okay, it says, For all these things the Gentiles seek. And what he's talking about is the things that go before that. He says, Gentiles seek. For your Heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. See, it's repeated because it's, that, that's how important it is. It's repeated. So uh, notice, for after all these things the Gentiles seek. So let's back up a little bit. Let's go back to verse 25. Matthew 6 and 25. And so in Matthew 6, 25, Therefore I say to you, take no thought for your life. And that's no anxious thought. Don't let your life be driven by anxiety. Amen. And he says, uh, what you will eat or what you will drink 
nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? See, Jesus is making a point here that the Gentiles seek these things. They seek them because they don't have a heavenly father. We have a heavenly father. And so one of the things that we don't want to do in prayer is pray like we don't have a heavenly father who doesn't know what we, what we believe or what we need. Our Heavenly Father knows. So what our Lord is saying, when you start to pray, get your attitude and your mind right. You're praying knowing, when I get down to pray, even before I pray, God knows what I have need of. Amen. Are you with me? Yeah. He knows that. And uh, so when you think about us, as, as Matthew will tell us and uh, other portions of Scripture, if we know how to give good gifts to our children, how much more does our God? God knows what I have need of. He knows what we have need of. And so when we go down to pray, pray often people say, well, prayer doesn't work because you're seeking like the Gentiles. See, what do the Gentiles seek? Well, we said, look at verse 25. They worry about their life, what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink about your body, so on and so forth. Look at verse 26, Matthew 6, 26. Gentiles seek these things. Are you, are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. They're seeking these things. We ought to be seeking God. Amen. God knows what I have need of. If you don't have a father, then what do you seek? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow uh, nor we, uh, excuse me, reap nor gather in the barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Notice, are you not of more value than they? Often the Bible makes the arguments from the lesser to the greater and from the greater to the lesser. In other words, if the lesser is being taken care of with intimate precision, thought, demonstration, care, concern, well, how much more is the major things? So the Bible is saying, if God takes care of birds, then how is he not going to take care of you? Amen. The Gentiles seek. And my brothers and sisters, the point I'm trying to make with you is that in many churches, people try to get us to act like Gentiles. If you have enough faith, you seek. What are we seeking? I'm, I'm seeking my time. I'm seeking my season. I'm seeking my job. I'm seeking my husband. I'm seeking my wife. I'm, that's what the Gentiles seek. Your heavenly father knows what you have need of. Amen. Amen. And, and for some folks, you know, uh, uh, when I do marriage counseling, uh, and I go to the book of Genesis, and I often, I, when I start at Genesis, I'll often say, uh, now, here's what God did to provide a man for a woman. The man had, a, man had intelligence because he could make decisions. He could call the animals what to, by their name. So he had intelligence, he had a job, he had a home. Okay? And he had a God. If a man doesn't have that, he doesn't qualify. Where are you, where are you going to take you? Where are gonna, what y'all going to eat? <laughs> what you going to drink? See, and if a man can't, if he can't take care of himself, Someone said, I told you before, someone said, two can live as cheaply as one. And I said, yeah, if one don't eat. <laughs> but if y'all both eating. <laughs> hey, man, my sister. <laughs> Look at the birds. Let's go to verse 27. Because what we're, what we're focusing on is what the Gentiles seek. He said, which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? That not, 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 no, excuse me, that not only means height, but it means to my life, to my lifespan. Yeah. I, you know, I'm, I'm worried and worried and worried. Is that going to cause me to live a week longer, a month longer? No, it's going to shorten my life. Amen. Amen. Verse 28. See, we got to seek. He says, so why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor that they spin. Okay? Verse 29. And yet I say to you that even Solomon, all his glory, was not arrayed 
like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you? Notice, O oh, you of little faith. Okay? So, see, our Heavenly Father knows what we have need of. One of the ways to deal with anxiety, to deal with the unknown, to try to figure out what's going to happen, is to get close enough with your Lord and your Heavenly Father to be able to say, my God knows what's going on. Amen. I'm going to come to you, and I trust you. And as I walk with you, then you will show me what I need to know. He does that. So don't, in our prayer time, don't let someone talk you into praying like you don't have a Heavenly Father Amen. who knows what you have need of. So he says uh, in verse 32, for all these things do the Gentiles seek. See, uh, and you know, uh, when I'm, we're various places, various pastoral meetings, uh, or sometimes out in restaurants and different places, and, and you hear people talk. And that's how Gentiles talk. People don't know the Lord because they don't know how things are going to work out. We know. And, and we know we may be absent from the body and we'll be present with the Lord. We know we're going to spend eternity. So uh, we're not driven by anxiety to provide these things because God knows what we have need of. And so rather than seeking, and that's what the next verse will say, the Gentiles seek for, uh, for these things. But verse 33, Matthew 6, 33, but seek you first. You seek as a priority the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Amen. Amen. So the idea in prayer is to seek the things of God first and foremost, to seek his righteousness. Amen. Jesus said in Matthew 5, he said, except your righteousness shall exceed that of the scribes and Pharisees, you're not going to enter into heaven. You're not going to heaven. And so it's better than self-righteousness, which that is only external. The idea is to seek God first and his righteousness, not mine. We all have our own righteousness. Here's what I think. Here's my perspective. Here's where I'm coming from. But what the righteousness that God gives us that comes from himself, that's the righteousness that we're seeking, to be right with God and then right with everybody else. So Matthew 6, 8 says, Do not be like them, for your heavenly Father knows what you have need of. What you have need of. Matthew, we're back to 6, 9. Matthew 6, 9 says this, In this manner, therefore, pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We talked about this last week. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come in Matthew 16. Matthew 6 verse 10. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. So the first request is God to be holy and hallowed. We can pray that for a long time. Get quiet with the Lord and say, Lord, be number one in my life. And again, uh, the life verse for me is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding, but all your ways acknowledge him. And he will direct your path. Amen. Matthew, the end of Matthew, Jesus promised his disciples, and the promise extends to us. Uh, he says, go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations. He says, I'm with you to the end of the age, end of the life. Anybody who's walking with the Lord realizes that God has been with them. Amen. You know, uh, we, we're not here this day. Um, you know, again, uh, I'm not here 77 years because I've been making wise decisions. I'm here because of the grace and mercy and the sovereignty of God who knows what I have need of. Amen. And as our sister was giving her testimony, I'm saying, man, uh, yeah, I, I, I got some testimonies also. Amen. Man, God knows what you have need of. He knows what he wants to do with you. So when I was getting ready uh, to retire, and I told you the story, but I was uh, looking at 
instead of retiring September the 1st, I said, you know, I'm, I'm a little anxious about money. So let me work September, October, November, December. I'm going to retire in 2001 in January. And I'm, I'm going to save up for, for four months get, you know, to have more money so I can retire. And uh, so what happened out of the clear, the Lord said to me, don't say there are four months to the harvest. The harvest is now. Okay? And so, uh, and then he, he verified it because I was out there working overtime one day, uh, getting close to my retirement. And uh, I saw something that was messed up and I went to touch it. And the Holy Spirit said, Don't you touch that. And it was uh, something that someone had, some guys had messed up some things. And what I thought was rubber coating was just a metal. And it was a 480 line. 440. You know, you know, you got 110 in your house. You got your the wash and dryer. You got 220. It's 440. And I put my hand out to, and the Holy Spirit stopped me. <laughs> Hallelujah. What I'm saying, and the Holy Spirit said, go call an electrician. He knew what I had need of. He knows. He takes care of us. So I, I never go to prayer, my brothers and sisters, you know, thinking, well, if I pray hard enough, if I do this, if I do that, my Heavenly Father knows what I have need of. Thank you. The le electrician came and, he, and I was pointing to him what, what the problem was. He said, oh, don't get away from the Julius. Don't touch that. He said, man, if you had touched that, we couldn't have found enough of you to bury. You'd have been blown all over this plant. I sat down and started shaking. <laughs> I'm shaking. To the point I'm trying to make, number one, God knows what you have need of. He knows. What a blessing. What a blessing. He knows. So, yeah, you know, and so we're struggling with all kind of things. And so we got uh, sickness, we got COVID, we got uh, the flu, we got uh, all kinds of older, we've gotten older now, we got shingles, we got all, every time you turn around, there's something else. Yeah. UTI, we got all kind of stuff going. All kind of stuff going. But, but this one thing I know my Heavenly Father yeah. knows what I have need of. And one day he knows that I need to go home to be with him. So yesterday I had a birthday party for my aunt, my youngest aunt, and she just turned 90. <laughs> so <laughs> I told her, I said, from the behind, I grabbed her and I said, Aunt Gertha, how are you? I said, I, I want you to know this is, this is your Uncle Butch. <laughs> She said, I know who you are. <laughs> she said, and I forgive you. And you know what she was talking about? When I was like four years old, and she, she was babysitting me and my, my other cousin, and we got off the bus. It was a packed bus. We got off the bus and wouldn't get back on, so she had, she had to walk another mile. <laughs> and so she said, I know who you are, and I forgive you. <laughs> I said, <laughs> I said oh, she still got the... <laughs> Yeah, I forgive you. Because she always tells that story. Be because of you, I had to walk a mile. Because you got off the bus because it was so crowded. If folks getting on, if folks getting off, you got off and wouldn't get back on. So I, I apologized again. <laughs> but we're praying that God's kingdom would come and his will would be done. And I want to drop down to uh, verse uh, 14. Matthew six fourteen, as we looked at again the uh, the kingdom, uh, and we looked at uh, our heavenly Father knows what we have need of. The other point I want to make is in Matthew six fourteen and fifteen, for if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Verse fifteen, but if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Now, 
people have looked at these verses and uh, tried to water them down. But remember, Jesus came under the law. So when he came under the law, he gave messages under the law. So he tells the man about, uh, the guy asks, he says, uh, I got, how do I get eternal life? Jesus gives him the answer under the law. Because what the law teaches is that if you're trying to get to heaven by doing good, you can't get there. You can't, even uh, the good Samaritan, the, why is that told? Because the, the lawyer was trying to tell Jesus, I'm fine. I want to know about eternal life. And everything you told me tells me I'm fine because I've kept the law. I'm good. I, I have eternal life because I'm good enough. And so that's why Jesus uh, told that story. He said, if you're that good, let me show you if you're not good enough. And he said, who's your neighbor? Because the, the guy said that, who's, well, who is my neighbor? Because he's trying to justify that he has eternal life. He's doing what the law says. But he wasn't. My brothers and sisters, anybody who thinks that they're living righteously enough to get to heaven by law works, or by doing good, by letting your good deeds over, overcome your bad deeds, you're not going to enter in there. Amen. And so what Jesus does in Matthew 6.14, being under the law, he tells them, here's the answer under the law. If you forgive men their trespasses, your Heavenly Father will also forgive you. Okay, but if you do not forgive, 6.15, men your trespasses, neither will your Heavenly Father forgive you. That's under the law. The law demands that we be perfect. And so this man, uh, or when Jesus is talking about prayer, reminds yourself that you're not perfect. And so, and you're not perfect and you're coming to your Father and you're depending upon grace and mercy. You're not depending upon the fact that who you think you are and how good you think you are. Because none of us are, are that good. And so when it comes to, uh, to forgiveness... Under the law, Matthew 5, 48 says, be perfect. It says, be perfect. Just like your heavenly father is perfect. Well, if I look at that and say, well, I, 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 that's impossible. I've already messed up. I, even if I started to be perfect for the rest of my life, I've still got a life that's imperfect. I can't be, in, I can't be perfect. That's what we have to get in. And so when we're praying, we're realizing that... Uh, it's grace and mercy that God hears us, that he answers, answers us, and that he's dealing with us as children. That's an amazing thing that we would look at it. Because so, again, the reason why many people have problems forgiving and looking at other people the way they should is because you, you haven't looked at your own sin enough. Amen. Amen. When th people say things are getting bad, I say, you know what, every, every argument could lead to death. Amen. And we see that more and more now. Amen. But what, what the Holy Spirit has been doing is he's been keeping society intact so that you could have, we could have a civilization. But uh, without the Spirit of God doing that, all arguments could lead to killing one another. But thanks be unto God. He, the, our sovereign God is in control. And so when I look at the forgiving uh, people and I realize what God does, he'll continue to allow certain people in my life that, for me to forgive. And as I'm thinking about it, and last night I was thinking about some stuff going on, and I said, here's how I feel. I don't feel like forgiving you at all. And so, I, so I had to start praying. I said, I'm going to tell you how I feel. I'm going to smile when you go to hell. That's how I feel. Y'all never felt that way, did you? And so then, <laughs> thank you, my sister. And so you begin to pray. And if you, if you haven't, been, see, and you pray and you say, Lord, I see I'm not where I should be. I see, because right now my feelings, so Father, help me not to live according to my emotions and my feelings, because this way I feel right now. I'm tired of this mess, and, and, and I'm about to handle it. <laughs> Y'all know where I'm coming from. Amen. Amen. The Holy Spirit taught me a long time ago, say, say, you know, uh, when, when Jesus handled it, he overturns the tables. <laughs> you know, he, he, I said, he said, but when you, when, he said, 
when you handle it, you burn the place down. <laughs> so I can't let you handle it. You see what I'm saying? When we handle it, we become destructive. And so, the, so, uh, so last night as I was looking at this verse, I said, I better share this with the church. Yeah. And so as you pray, Father, don't let me respond in me. Because I realize I can be stupid. I can be sinful. I'm fallen. You know, and my flesh is just as sinful as everybody else. So Lord, forgive me and cleanse me. So I did a lot of singing about the blood that cleanses me from day to day. Thank you, Father, for the blood that signed my name. Thank you for the blood that gives me strength. Thank you, Lord. The blood, it was the blood. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the seas heard my despairing cry, and from the waters he lifted me. Now say, now that's love. That's love. So the Bible tells us Jesus loved you and me not because we were so holy and righteous. He loved us when we were sinners. And now when I look at someone, I'm going, Father, help me to pray for this person. You know, again, the word forgiveness uh, has the idea of releasing them from the debt. <laughs> it's like, you owe me, but you ain't paid me, but I'm going to release you from the debt. No matter how I feel about it. And so you, you know that that has happened when you can see someone and not let it uh, uh, color your response. Amen. But when you see someone and, you, and all that's going through your mind, that so-and-so did this to me, that rascal did this, that rascal, and he ain't said nothing about it, she ain't said nothing about it, well, you haven't released it yet. Because once you release it, you can move on, Amen. realizing, as Jesus said, listen, you just, re you just forgiven a little bit. But your heavenly father Amen. has forgiven you the money you can't, I mean, the debt you cannot repay. Amen. 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 Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's something about that name. Yeah. Master, Savior, Jesus. Like the fragrance after the rain. Yeah. Jesus, Jesus, yeah. Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord Jesus. Let all heaven and earth proclaim. No, kings and kingdoms will all pass away. But there's something about that name. So I go back to the Super Bowl Sunday. You know what I'm thinking about? We're talking about uh, who, who might win and, uh, you know, dynasties, you know, for a while there. This one team had a dynasty, the other team had a dynasty. In other words, they won most of the time. So uh, when I think about my Lord and Savior with his eternal dynasty coming, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. But he's going to rule and reign forever and ever and ever. Aren't you glad you're on his side? Aren't you glad you're on his side? Amen. He's king and kings. Hallelujah. Father, as we close this time, looking at these two points, of about, well, uh, second one about forgiveness and the other about uh, the fact that uh, uh, we know that you know uh, what we have need of even before we ask. So, Father, we thank you. We pray those two things with those uh, two items might stay in our mind. You know what we have need of and help us be the kind of people who will go to you about forgiveness and uh, let, the, let it go so that we can uh, continue to be the people of God that you use strongly. The Bible says in, in this in the Old Testament that the eyes of the Lord run to and fro through all the earth to show himself strong on the behalf of those who are loyal to him. Our prayer, Heavenly Father, is that we might remain loyal to you. This we ask in Jesus' name for his sake. Amen. Amen. Thank you, my brothers and sisters. Praise the Lord.